Yo, what is up, you two? James back here, and welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Battle Battles. Today, we are going to be using Kazuki's team once again with Yveltal Groudon on top of Coco, Metagross, and Sonora Mimikyu, the team that he used to reach top four at the Pokemon World Championship. If you want to go read up about this team, his report is in the description down below, alongside his Twitter, if you want to go give him a follow. But otherwise, I think it's time to get started and play some games so the common question for today doesn't have to do with pokemon um at least the main series games but have you ever played pokemon mystery dungeon and which series is your favorite out of the four available game uh, series so i think i'm gonna get a lot of responses of Explores the Sky. Explores the Sky is definitely my favorite. And the reason I'm asking this question is, one, I've been replaying um, Explores the Sky of late. I, I didn't realize how beautiful the special episodes were. But the awesome one is the Yveltal just reminded me of one of the games, which I will try not to spoil. But, yeah, it does remind me of one of those games. But, yeah, Explores the Sky is definitely my favorite. I do love the original Red and Blue a lot. Um... Since I think it was actually my one of my first games on the DS that I owned. The first games I owned on the DS were Mario Kart DS and um, Mystery Dungeon, I think, Blue. So, yeah. We got our first opponent, though, from Japan with a Driplim, Tapu Lele, Groudon, Kyurem, White, Raikou, and Zorak. What an interesting team. Uh, pretty bad for us, actually, because uh, we don't have great Yveltal lands. I mean, great Kyurem answers. Yeah, so, um, this could get ugly right off the bat. Um, I think I go Trick Room in this, uh, mode here. I think I go Yveltal Metagross here with Mimikyu and uh, Groudon. I don't think Incineroar is that great. I, this is probably, like, a full-on offensive team. So if I can get Trick Room up, I think I can win the game. But, of course, I'm going to have to handle the Lele. And the reason I'm going to lead the... Oh, no, this could be... This is a gravity team, isn't it? It's Scarf Lele with Hypnosis Driftblim. I just realized I should have brought Coco. It's definitely one of those teams. <laughs> oh no. The Yveltal Metagross will take the field against the Driftblim Top of Lele. Watch. I'm revealing the Scarf Lele here. The Psyche Seed's going to activate the Dark Aura. Is gonna oh wait, no. It's not It's not Scarf. Okay. That gives us a shot. That does give us a shot. So Burden's going to be active for the Drift Blim. I can go for the Snarl here into the Iron Head right off the bat. Um, I think this is the best play possible. It is because you want to double the Lele to see if you can try to prevent the Gravity immediately. And yeah, we can break a Sash on Lele if it is one of those Focus Sash type of Lele that we commonly see on this team. So at least it's not going to be a Scarf. Gravity, Slow Drift Blim, Hypnosis, Strat, Turn 1. And my opponent doesn't protect either, so goes for the Tailwind here, which is acceptable, as we are going to be able to get a Snarl off into the uh, Drift Blim and the Top of the Lele. This does allow my opponent to get a free switch in with the Groudon, most likely, but uh, I think this is okay here. Because getting rid of the Taunt user in the Lele is super huge here. So we are able to get rid of the Lele. As we'll probably see the Groudon come in. Yeah. I'll go for a foul play into the Groudon slot. As well as I think an Iron Head in the Drift Bloom. Because th the foul play covers for Swords Dance. And if I can put Drift Bloom into position where. Let's say the Drift Bloom goes for Raw Hypnosis. It'd probably be in a Yveltal. And then I think I have. A uh, shot to where I can get Mimikyu in instead of Trick Room if I have the position to knock out the Drift with Sucker Punch or the uh, Bullet Punch later. So my opponent can't double the Mimikyu, break his disguise, and knock it out. So yeah, I'm gonna Iron Head the Drift Blim. I don't think Iron Head should KO the Drift Blim anyway. So let's see here. Goes for the Raw Hypnosis, does dodge, which is huge, but it's Eruption. Oh, that's not what I expected. It creates some Metagross, which isn't a big deal. But, wow. It's special Groudon. 
They usually run physical on this team. I wonder if this team had gravity. Wow, that did a lot. Maybe it's just... It might be mixed because that eruption didn't do too much. I might explain it. I'm going to go Mimikyu here. And I'm going to trick him up or uh, Snarl here. Can I just foul play to Drift Bump? Uh, no. Snarl is fine. Because even if I don't KO either one of the Pokemon, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot regardless. I'm going to trick him here and Snarl. Because once I get trick him up, I'm in a really good spot. We're going to see the Icy Wind come out. My opponent can't knock out either Pokemon without a, uh... Oh, man, we did. Because <laughs> the crit on Yveltal doesn't activate Barry again. Oh, no. I... Groudon might be able to knock me out with an eruption, but... I... I'd imagine you have another move at this point. Let's see. Fire Blast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's... That's... That's one of the first times I've seen that one. <laughs> Alright, we got to trick him up, which is pretty good. And, yeah. I mean, Fire Blast makes sense because Eruption... I mean, you want to know the Fire Move for Eruption. Overheat lowers your special attack, so you have to switch out every time. And then, Flanter is actually really weak on Groudon. So, yeah. Fire Blast does kind of make sense. Um, but... Yeah, we get ground on an, under the trick room, and then I think this is our game to get the brooms out. We're going to start sweeping here with Eruption plus Shadow Sneak, and there's really not much my opponent can do. Now, unless this ground on slow, like, really slow for some reason, but since it took so much from the foul play, yeah, I just don't think it's bulky at all. So Shadow Sneak will come out. No protects, even. Just to make sure we don't miss the Drift Blim, here comes the Eruption, and yes, double knockout right here. Unless the ground lives somehow, which I don't think it would. Yeah. As Groudon and Driplim go down. And then it comes down to the final Pokemon. And I'm guessing that's going to be the Kyurem. I can just go for the Z-move and the Eruption. And I think I just win the game. Even if Kyurem protects, it needs multiple protects. And the Z-move will break through the Kyurem's protect. Don't think there's much my opponent can really do here as... Eruption and also thanks to my opponent's icy wind. I'm guaranteed slower anyway than the curum if it was mint speed for some reason So we'll go for the Z here and the match is gonna be forfeited my opponent realizing there isn't really a way out of the Situation my opponent was in so we're able to take a pretty early game one uh, My opponent not protecting lead. I was huge. I was just able to pick up a knockout could have been spec slightly too, I guess but I'm assuming it's gravity team but there's no reason to really run gravity on that team. Maybe the Kyurem didn't even have Blizzard. Usually that team, we see Physical Ground with Precipice Blade, Swords Dance. And then on the Kyurem, we usually see Blizzard. Uh, sometimes a Scarf, sometimes uh, Specs. But yeah. Able to pick up a win, which is nice. A quick win to pull things off. We were able to find a position where I think we were able to get Shrikram up. The fact is we were able to dodge that. Um, I mean, the... In fact, we were able to dodge that hypnosis is nice, but of course, hypnosis is 60% accurate, so it's not the most reliable thing in the world. Um, unless you, of course, you are running that gravity. But since my opponent wasn't able to get gravity up, if my opponent had it, we were able to come out pretty cleanly. So it looked like it would be a full special ground on that team, which is an interesting take of that team. I'm guessing that Earth Power as the last attack, it, unless it had four attacks for some reason, then <laughs> I'm just surprised that Foul Play did so much. It did like 75% and that Groudon wasn't a physical Groudon. I'm actually just really surprised why that Foul Play did so much. Was it mixed? Did that Precipice Blades over Earth Power? Was it like a hasty Groudon too? I mean, that could explain it, I guess. I have no clue, but yeah. Well, luckily, uh, Luckily, the team was able to pull through, but otherwise, um, it would have been different. If it was the Scarf Blade, I would have absolutely regret not bringing Coco, because dealing with that would have been... But it's like, what slot do I sack for the top of Coco? I like the Trick Room option on the Mimikyu. I need Groudon for offense if I'm going to go for the Trick Room. I'd probably have to either sacrifice Metagross. I'd probably have to sacrifice Metagross or Mimikyu, I feel like. But yeah, it's taking a while to find our next game, so we'll be right back with the second game of today's episode. Alright, we got Jay from Italy, 1628 rating as our next opponent. That took forever to find the game. What the heck is this team, though? Alternate Cosmo, Top of Lead, a Beedrill, Groudon, Suicune, and Amoongus. Okay, some interesting picks. Um, 
Do I just go my standard lead? Because I think my standard lead is pretty good against my opponent's team. <laughs> the problem is I just really don't like uh, the uh, Groudon Grout matchup with his team. Like, Pessimus Blaze is just so scary. As well as Eruption. But uh, probably more Pessimus Blades. Let's go Yveltal once again. It just really shuts down most of the team options that my opponent has. Uh, we'll go the Metagross. Maybe I could go Chicken Mode here. It's definitely possible. Uh, I'm just worried about that my opponent brings a Moongus, although I don't think my opponent should. I still think Yveltal plus Groudon is a... I mean, Tapu Koko with Groudon is a good safety pick, though. Yeah, especially since bulky water types are annoying. So the fact is having that nature's madness is going to be really good here, I feel like. I'm just going to have to really be worried about the Groudon. Again, Groudon, I think, is like so scary for this team to handle. But let's see if we can handle this team. We also don't know what kind of sets these are. I'm, I can't tell if it's physical or special with this team. So Necrozma Tapolet is going to lead. I can play the 50-50, and I will gladly play the 50-50 if I have to. Metagross plus Yveltal will lead here. And, yep. I can go for the Bullet Punch uh, trade here. Or I could go for just a simple Snarl into the uh, Snarl Protect here is fine. Snarl Protect is probably fine. Just gonna not Mega Evolve Snarl here. Covers a lot of plays. Glad I'm going to switch out. Worried about the top of Coco switch. It looked like Groudon's coming in, which is completely fine by me. Because catching a Snarl, if it's a special Groudon, is great. If it's a physical Groudon, uh, I can foul play Stomping the next turn. And after the Snarl damage, it might be a knockout. So I'll gladly take this trade. We also don't know whether the Necrozma is protecting or um, not. But I would imagine it would want to protect here. Let's see what my opponent decides to do. Uh, my... Okay, so you're bursting here. You're going to have access to your Z-move. Although, I don't think it matters unless you're going to read a switch and uh, burst and uh, Z-move there. But I don't think you would. So let's see here. Protect? Yeah, it's protect. So I could have went for stomping into the Lele slot. I think it was actually a very viable play. But I wasn't too sure of that. At least I'm going to get a Snarl off into the uh, Groudon slot, which again is pretty big. But yeah, um, I think the play is just to foul play the Necrozma slot. The problem I'm worried about is if you just Moongeist the Metagross and knocks out, and then you're about to take the chip where Lele gets annoying. So is it better to sack Coco here? It might be better just to sack Coco here. Because I can't go into Groudon here. But let's see what my opponent does. Because I'm pretty sure it's like Fire Punch here into a, um, a Moon Geist Beam. Let's see. Bring out the Electric Surge. It is going to be that Moon Geist Beam turning to Coco. We'll survive that, which is nice. And then what does a Groudon go for? I'm guessing Fire Punch. It might have been better also to foul play to Groudon since I guess Necrozma isn't too much of a threat uh, in the late game. But I'd rather just get rid of Necrozma now so my Metagross and my Groudon's more freed up. Here comes the Fire Punch. Let's target down my Yveltal slot. Won't activate Barry. Huh. Idro gonna come out. I guess since it gets access to Poison Jab. Or would you just U-turn? I don't think you would... <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out what is a safe play for my opponent. Do I have a safe play is my question. Because I'm trying to figure out how do I avoid taking a Presence Blades or a U-turn here. Um, I think it's just sack. Go do that. And go for the Z-move into the... Groudon slot? I don't know. I think I could also Volt Switch to Beedro to put in range of the thing, but I don't know if Beedro is staying in or not, because I feel like would you want Yveltal to get a foul play off and pick up a knockout here? Because I think if I do that, I just win the game. 
Or if I foul play the ground and I just get the chip to where Metagross just wins the game at that point. Actually, I probably should have just double up the ground on slot now that I think about it. It doesn't risk anything, but it is a U-turn coming out, which is no surprise there. And I will get the Guardian of Alola off, and that's absolutely huge here. Getting the Guardian of Alola off is huge here because that puts the ground on range of Stomping Tantrum, which is pretty significant here. So, here comes the Guardian of Alola. I don't get why I said it like that. <laughs> All right, but uh, we'll get the Z move off, which is huge. We'll be able to, let's see how much this does to Groudon. Because I don't remember where it was. It was like 90, right? So it's like 20. Oh, wow, 15. I don't know my math here, apparently. Or does it always do 75%? I just can't remember. Here comes Precipice Blades. Coco Voids. I actually probably preferred Coco going down there. Um, it's fine, I guess, but yeah, it's fine. Because now my opponent has to read whether I'm going to go for Sucker Punch or not. I think I'm just going to foul play, though, the Beedrill slot and Electroweb that slot as well. Yeah, because, I mean, at this point, I think Metagross next to Groudon can win the game. We're going to see the Groudon retreat into the, I'm guessing that's the Lele, and then probably the U-turn coming out, I imagine. So that's fine, because I'm going to get the Electroweb off, which is absolutely huge here. Yeah, U-turn coming out. Let's see if this knocks out your Bell. So this is adaptability boosted. It does. But that is fine. Because ground I'm going to come in, but um, not really a big deal for me. And then I can just keep going for Electro Web plus uh, Stomping Tantrum in a Groudon slot. And I should be able to knock out Beedrill, I'd imagine, with Stomping Tantrum in Electro Web. And it catches whatever if Lele ever decides to switch. The only problem is if it's Shadow Ball into Lele, which I don't think it would be, but it's possible. So will Stomping Tantrum, the Groudon, Electro Web once again. That should put the Lele into. Uh, I should put Lele into range where my gro own ground on should uh, be able to outspeed it. I'm also not going to go for the Iron Head in the Lele. Even though the ground on Protect is super obvious. I don't think I have to risk that. At least at this stage of the game. Yeah, because ground on has Force Protect here. Let's see if the Lele does have uh, what I think it does. The Electro Web. I guess I'm pretty sure ground on outspeeds the Lele afterward. Especially if it's modest, which I think this team has to be. Stomping into Protect. Just Psy Shock, which is fine. Okay. And I think that should be game because now I get to go Grout, my own Grout on. I get to click Eruption into Stomping. And there is absolutely no switch my opponent has for a chance to come in back into this game. The Grout on will come out. And Eruption Stomping should seal the trick because I just don't see anything my opponent has. The Lele is locked into a Psy Shock. Um, he really can't do much damage. Groudon outspeeds. If you sack Beedrill, you still lose the game because he probably lose two Pokemon here unless Groudon gets a double protect. Yeah, Eruption and Earth Power. Eruption Stomping. Match is going to be forfeited because I think my opponent realizes that and has no way to beat the, the Groudon. So, um... I think overall, I think even though I won this game, it was definitely a bit tricky. I think overall, there was one play that I could have done better where that was that one turn. I think I didn't have a reason to protect your Beltal, actually. I think I should have just doubled up the Groudon slot because as long as I got the damage on the Groudon I needed, I think I just won the game regardless in the same scenario. Uh, Yeah, it, it would have been the same scenario regardless. So, able to pick up. Uh, two wins, which is nice. I think we'll go for one more because that was pretty short. Actually, no, it's like my time is actually screwed up because of the fact that I was waiting so long for a battle. So <laughs> I'll play one more game because I think that was like under 18 minutes, I think. So yeah, uh, we'll go for one more game, but I think overall, I think it was just huge getting the snarl off first, the big damage. Um, I think getting Coco in was nice. Did we? Avoid Precipice Blades? I don't think we did. No, we did avoid Precipice Blades, but I don't think it ended up mat mattering in the end game because we got like the Precipice Blades dodge in the late game, I think. 
Uh, but it really didn't matter because Groudon would have came in and it would pretty much be, I think, the same scenario, I think. I don't think my opponent had a good answer against Metagross. So I think we would have been fine regardless, even if that did hit. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that the game was going to come down to Metagross. Like I positioned it well to deal with Metagross. Like there were probably some more aggressive plays I could make. Like the Protect on the... Um, the Protect was a bit obvious, but I didn't want Lele to stay in just to go for Moonblast because that would have been pretty bad if it did go for Moonblast and got all that damage in the Eveltal just immediately. I'd rather go for the Snarl turn one. And yeah, I think that was pretty much it. Like maybe I could have capitalized more, but I felt like I made the plays I needed to, to um, pretty much seal up the game. Again, I think it was just that one turn. I could have just doubled up the ground instead of protecting Eveltal, which was a bit unnecessary, I think. But yeah. It's going to take a while to find our next game, it looks like. So we'll be right back with the third game of today's episode. All right, we got Rick from the United States, 1767 rating. That took half an hour to find the game. I'm surprised I'm still here. We have Xerneas, Landis, Varian, Rayquaza, Tapufini, Incineroar, and Amoongus. So X-Ray is an interesting matchup. The Landris does make this difficult, but I feel like we should have enough tools to handle this. Hmm... It's just the Landers. The Landers is so problematic. As well as the um, Tabafini next to Ray and the Amoongus also is kind of annoying as well. I got to figure out how to play around those. Um, I kind of want to actually bring Yveltal just as a ground. This is good here because of the fact that it can actually absorb a Tectonic Rage since the Landers is usually Z move. I feel like this is also a rough matchup. Um... And I wish I had like Tailwind or something here. Uh, what do I bring if I was my opponent? That's the question. I would bring Rayquaza, Xerneas for sure. I say I would not bring Amoongus. I just don't think you would bring Amoongus. I feel like it's unlikely. It's possible, but I feel like it's unlikely against a Coco, a Groudon team. Uh, maybe I should risk that. I think I'm going to go Mimikyu, Metagross, Groudon, Incin- ugh, I, I didn't have time. It was either Incin or Yveltal, and I was like, I wasn't sure. I bring Incineroar for Fake Out, which isn't bad, but like, I don't think it was the best call. Like, I really don't think it was. Uh, we'll see here, though. I should have brought Yveltal, though. Yveltal was better for the Landers. Because I feel like I'm going to struggle against uh, Landris Ray more than you, uh, Xerneas Ray. It's actually going to be the Xerneas and the Amoongus leading right off the bat. So I think that's fine here. I could taunt the uh, Amoongus slot and go for an Iron Head into the Xerneas. As long as it's not Mental over Amoongus. But uh, Mental over Amoongus isn't really that common anymore. So I'll go for the taunt here into the Amoongus slot. And I'll go for the Iron Head into the Amoongus slot as well. We'll see if we can get some momentum right here. Actually, I should always Iron Head the Xerneas slot. Is Dazzling Gleam going to come out? Okay. That's fine. No Geomancy Xerneas is completely okay by me. As we will have our Disguise busted, we will go for the Taunt and Iron Head into the Amoongus slot. I kind of wish I Iron Head the Xerneas slot now, but uh, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, we will Taunt the Amoongus here. As, yeah, that's not too bad for us. I can go for a play rough, I think, into the Xerneas slot. Can I just play rough and stomping? I feel like Xerneas should always protect here, but I'm not too sure. I don't want to set up Trick Room because Amoongus can come back later in the game. Um, I kind of just want to double up the Amoongus slot with play rough and stomping. Uh, actually, no, I want to double up with Plenty of Rough Iron Head in case Landers comes in if there is no Incineroar. Xerneas going to protect, okay. Which is an inter interesting play. Because if I don't knock on Amoongus here, I'm in a good spot. But I think I do knock on Amoongus, actually. Yeah, I do knock on Amoongus. So, not exactly the greatest, but I think it's alright for what it's worth here. Uh, we're able to get rid of that um, Amoongus, which is nice. So I can set up Trick Room now pretty freely. Uh, let's see what my opponent's going to bring out. If it's going to be the Incineroar. If it's going to be the um, Landorus. It is going to be Incineroar. So 
Is there no Rayquaza or no Landers? I assume no Rayquaza. Because I feel like you want Landers to deal with the Groudon. Oh well. Um. Well, Trick Room here and just Iron Head to Xerneas slot, I guess. Because I don't think it should be Z and Sinnoh on this team. I think Landers should always be the Z move. And, like, if I get Trick Room up, if you fake out Geomancy right here, that's fine. Because I just get a free switch to Incineroar afterward. Yeah, I think it's fine. Because I can just go for, like, fake out with my own Incineroar. And I can intimidate this Incineroar so it can't knock out my Metagross effectively. So, uh, it's going to be an interesting couple of turns. We're actually going to see the Xerneas Retreat, which is not bad for me. Landers does reveal itself here. So we do get to reveal all the Pokemon. And I think if I can get ground on their Trick Room, I think I do. I am able to just win this game. So, uh, interesting. We will Mega Evolve our Metagross right here. I do wish I brought Yveltal, though. Yveltal would have been nice here. But not too bad of a spot here. Uh, no protects either, so I am going to be able to get an Iron Head. I mean, no Fake Out. Flare Blitz just going to come out, okay? Into the Metagross. Wow, that actually almost KO'd. But, actually, I thought it would KO because I didn't intimidate yet. Okay. We get to trick him up. And I think this is completely fine for our spot here. But I don't think Zemo KOs the Landers, which is unfortunate. I do want to go Incineroar and sack it, I think, so I can bring in my Groudon. And I think I'm just going to play rough the uh, Incineroar slot just for some chip. Yeah, because I don't need these Pokemon anymore. I think my own Groudon can just win the game. So I'm just going to sack my Incineroar right here. And hopefully my Mimikyu, but we'll see what it goes. The Landers could easily just protect here. So I'm going to try to get some chip into the uh, Incineroar slot, whether it's going to U-turn out in Xerneas or not. We are going to see the Protect from the Lander's T. As U-Turn does come out, which is fine. I don't mind that. So, I guess the next couple of turns get interesting. I mean, Xerneas takes some chip, which is nice. Even if it's minus two play rough, it's very or boosted. So, it should still do like 20%, which is kind of nice, actually. Because I'll guarantee the KO with Eruption now, which is good. The play rough. Yeah, that's actually a little less than I thought, but I can taunt now. Taunt is Ernia, so it can't do anything. I just go for the Flare Blitz into the Landers in case it goes for the Z-move. I think it covers all plays except the Incineroar switching in for the Xerneas slot, but even then, I don't mind if that happens because I'm guaranteed the damage onto Landers, which is fine for me. Are we going to see Yep, the Incineroar switch in once again, which is completely fine. My opponent's making some really good plays, but I think overall in the end, I'll be able to win this game with Groudon next to my Metagross. So Flare Blitz going to come out into the Landris. Oh, did we crit? No, we didn't even crit. Okay, so that should just seal up the game 100% because I can just taunt his earnings and preventing it from geomancing. Taunt the Incineroar. I guess maybe if you Flare Blitz here for the uh, knockout into the uh, Mimikyu. Ah, but I could just taunt here the Xerneas and knock off. Yeah, as long as I get rid of that power up on Xerneas, I should be good to go. I'm going to taunt and knock off. Because it covers every play. It doesn't matter if you Moonblast, Dazzle, and Gleam, Protect. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because you're probably just going to try to kill my Mimikyu. But you will lose your power up in the process. Which I am completely okay with. So, Flare Blitz is going to come out. Does target on the Mimikyu. Which won't KO probably. Unless it's an offensive Incineroar. Yeah. Taunt the Xerneas slot. And we just keep going for Taunt and knock off. And then Groudon in the end game combined with my uh, Metagross should be able to seal up this game 100%. Even if you get a double... Actually, if you get a double, that's annoying. But you have to knock out Mimikyu, right? So that gives me a free switch. Uh, actually, no. Mm. Fails a double, though. If it got a double... Well, let's see what the Incineroar did this turn. So I get rid of the Power Herb. Flareblitz comes out. Is that in my Incineroar? Oh, huh, Okay. I mean, even if you got the double, 
I think even if he got the double up, it's fine, actually, because I could have U-turned out my Incineroar into my Groudon, and then Mimikyu would go down, because I'm assuming you're going to flare this by Mimikyu. If Mimikyu survives, I get Trick Room up, and the game's 100% over. If Mimikyu goes down, I get Incineroar back in. I can fake out the Xerneas, Earth Power the Incineroar for the knockout. Yeah, I'd still be fine regardless. So, uh, going to go for a Shadow Sneak, since I'm expecting Mimikyu to go, Mimikyu to go down. And a U-turn into the Incineroar. Since Ernest can Geo. I'm going to try to get Geomancy up now. I'm guessing maybe my opponent's going to hope I choke. And uh, attack the... Uh, try to Geomancy. And maybe go for a uh, attack in the Incineroar. But Moonblast's going to come out into the Incineroar slot. As I am able to U-turn out. I'll U-turn into Groudon and just our power the Incineroar and finish off this game. So, go Groudon. Because the uh, Incineroar can't really touch the Groudon at all. And as long as we have Metagross alive with Iron Head, we still win this game. We we click Iron Head and Earth Power. There's nothing my opponent can really do. And there's really no way to touch the Groudon in the first place for my opponent. So, let's see what the Incineroar will go for. Hopefully, just knock out my Mimikyu so I get the free switch in to my uh, Metagross to win the game. Flare is going to come out. Looks like it's turning my uh, ground on. Yeah. Either way, it's fine. I earth power the Incineroar slot. I trick room in case you don't attack my Mimikyu slot. And that'll be game. So earth power and trick room. That way I can eruption the following turn. And even if it's a salt vest Incineroar, I don't think it's living the modest max special attack earth power, especially with the chip it's at. Oh, we should be good. Moonblast gonna fire off into Mimikyu. No, no ground. I'm maybe hoping for a special attack drop. Doesn't get it. Earth Power is able to knock out the Incineroar, and that is a 100% game. Um, and there's nothing my opponent can do here. I'll just switch out the Mimikyu this turn. Reset the... Uh, I'll reset the Mimikyu stats. Get an Incineroar, because I don't... Because Xerneas A could protect, try to stall out, get four turns, I guess. Like, that's a possibility, I guess. But, yeah, this game's over. I go Incineroar, I click Eruption. Eruption's going to do enough damage to where two should knock it up. Or just put the Xerneas in Bullet Punch range. All those different options. I want to reset the Mimikyu stats, because if I get one hit on uh, Xerneas, Shadow Snake and a Bullet Punch is guaranteed knockout. Like, I don't even think the Z knocks out the Xerneas, which is why I'm switching out the Mimikyu slot. <laughs> uh, it really doesn't matter. Like, there is no win con, I think, from my opponent. I think it was just, like, my opponent just letting the, um, one didn't... I feel like my opponent relied so much on Geomancy with the Amoongus, Incineroar, and the Landers. But the fact is, my opponent even get a chance to have Geomancy, or just chose not to go for it. So I was in a really good spot regardless. Yeah, nice chip. Here comes the Moonblast. Into the Groudon. But yeah, again, this game's over. Oh, it was taunted. I forgot I actually got the taunt off successfully, so it couldn't even protect. Never mind. Second Flare Blitz and Earth Power, I guess, and I win the game regardless. Like, I have Bullet Punch in the back. I have Shadow Sink in the back. Like, this game is hopeless for my opponent. Like, there's 100% zero chance of my opponent coming back. So, yeah. Like, if I'm not KOing it with these Pokemon, I'm KOing it with my Metagross in the back. So, and my opponent couldn't, is, doesn't even have the Geomancy boost, which I think is needed to KO with a Mimikyu with Dazzling Gleam. You can't even KO the Zerni, uh, the Incineroar with Dazzling Gleam. I guess the double. Again, it's just, uh, we're just waiting here until I get the attacks off to KO the Xerneas, because there's literally nothing my opponent can do. Crits don't save my opponent. Uh... It was a real power up, so it can't have bright powder or anything. <laughs> There's literally nothing. Ah, uh, maybe actually if it stalled out successfully and had double team, I guess. Only way, I guess. Yeah. Would literally have to have. But we have our Z move in the back, too. <laughs> so uh, we would have been fine, I think, still regardless. So uh, able to pick up the win against Rick. And yeah, that is going to be the third episode of today's game. So thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Rick Bows. If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below. Show some support as well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description. Such as my social media, side series on my channel, and more. 
if you want to go check out Kazuki's team report or his Twitter, links in the description down below. But otherwise, be sure to answer the comment question of the day, which was, have you ever played Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? And if you have, which game was your favorite out of the series? But otherwise, I think that is pretty good. If you want to support me, be sure to leave a like. Again, leave a comment. Share this video with your friends. And also, the fact is, if you want to go an extra mile, there is my Patreon page and Twitch channel linked in the description down below. Thank you to everyone who has supported me on those platforms. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch you all later.